Hello, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all having a lovely day. It has been about three weeks now in real time that I have played poker and I've taken quite a break since the last video that you may or may not have seen. I have lost $600,000 in the past two videos in this year in cash games. Uh, most recently lost about $550,000 at Hustler. Since then I've taken a few weeks off, the longest break I've ever had ever since I started this poker and YouTube venture here. So um, three weeks off the felt, took some time to work on other things, self-reflect, you know, just clear my head and reset for the most part. Uh, I have some other cool projects actually that will be released pretty soon. Uh, I'm excited to announce those whenever they happen up. You're gonna see them on YouTube and all the other things, but I'm back. I returned here today. We're gonna play the Tropicana at Bally's live stream. Big bet, big bet Bally's. We're playing 100-100 with a $100,000 buy-in. Uh, I think it's a forced buy-in, so everyone's in for 100K. <sighs> I'm nervous. I have a $600,000 bankroll challenge to make up and I haven't won uh, this year yet in live poker and it's currently February 3rd. So it's been over a month of just straight up losing and I've got some work to do. So I'm a little bit nervous today, but I did everything I could uh, to prepare for this. What I mean by everything I could to prepare for this, I mean during the break, I did play a little bit of poker, online poker on WPT Global. Big shout out to uh, the sponsor of you know, the channel and everything like that. So if you wanna join and play online, you use the code down below, uh, use code Rampage and use the link down below to make an account as a sign up bonus. And they have a WPT Cruise running satellite packages for. So that's always a good time there. Uh, secondly, what I did was I, last night I had sushi at a place that apparently Phil Ivy frequents a lot. So I'm gonna add a picture of it because there's literally a sushi called the Phil Ivy Roll. It is uh, two pieces of A5 Wagyu, uh, a piece of foie gras, I think I'm saying it right. And then like a little, and some caviar and then a little bit of gold sprinkled on top. So I did everything I could to run good today. So there's that. Hopefully the Phil Ivy gold and sushi is going to provide the run good today, but let's get into the game. It's the first time in a while I'm playing poker. So I'm a little bit nervous. Good luck us. Let's get this $100,000 forced buy-in game underway. Right off the bat, we pick up a pretty good hand. Ace, Jack of Spades in the cutoff. There's an ungun raise to 300. Early position makes the call. I decide to call this one, and we get a bunch of other players to call around. So multi-way to a flop we go, which comes a glorious Queen, Jack, 3, to Spades. That's right. Pair and nut flush draw. What more can I ask for? The ungun player throws out a continuation bet of 1200 bucks. Of course, I am not going to go anywhere. I don't think my hand wants to raise just yet. I do only have middle pair for all that's worth, so I decided to make the call here and small blind calls as well. So we've eliminated the field to only three players into the turn we go, which is the ace of hearts. Here we are with two pair. Small blind throws out a check. The under the gun player continues again for 2200. I am not going to go anywhere. I once again don't feel comfortable to raise because now there's a straight on the board and well, two pair is just two pair here so i make the call and the small blind ends up getting out of the way and folds now going heads up to a river which comes the nine of clubs this time antonius checks it over to me and now i've just got to bet this one after he checks in the river gotta know my hand is good but how much do i want to bet and how much value do i think i can get and i decided to size up on an amount of ten thousand dollars here throwing out 10k would be lovely to get paid right off the bat to start off the session pretty hot and he does end up thinking about it and calling down with king queen so t flop top pair Get sucked out on with two pair, but granted, I did have a whole lot of outs to start off. Anyways, I scoop a nice little $30,000 pot to start off the session, looking like things are going well. After a hot start, I pick up another premium pocket jacks in early position. I decided to limp this one. We're playing the V-Pip game, which means everyone has to play at least 35% of their hands. So uh, here I'm going to limp in with some strong hands along with some bad hands. And the player in the cutoff raises it up to $600. Button makes a call and I decided to three bet this one. Of course, I am not going to limp call here with just pocket jacks. I'm going to make it huge and size up to $6,000 here. I'm out of position against the original razor and that razor does end up making the call here to play some hands and mix things up always love playing with han 
Now, we're going heads up to a flop, which comes 784 rainbow. Here, I have an overpair. You can already see that this is not going to be good news for me, but if only I knew that at the time. I continue firing out for 6,500. It's close to a half pot sized bet. And here, Han, of course, comes along with a call. Now, off to a turn, which is the three of diamonds. So, two diamonds on the board. Han has about $56,000 behind, and I am mixed here. I'm kind of torn between a few different decisions, and one of them could just be a check because Jax is just one pair. Secondly, it could be an all-in, as I could commit Han to call with hands like pocket nines, pocket tens, flush draws potentially, or pair and flush draws. He has a whole lot of things I could call, so I decided to go for value and get a little greedy here. I go all-in. It's about two times the size of the pot, and my opponent snap calls. You know, that's not a good sign here when your opponent snap calls versus 2x pots, and I'm in some rough shape here and we go to showdown he shows his set the river 10 of hearts not the jack very close to one though a little bit of a sweat there but here han wins a massive hundred forty thousand dollar pots it is not good for me though and uh, i immediately add on about another 50 to sixty thousand dollars and here yeah you know winning the first pot then losing and doubling up my opponent not very good to lose a massive pot to start the day but luckily we've got plenty of poker to play to try to climb back from it here trying to regroup i pick up ace king off suit here under the gun a few minutes later after that monster pot i just have to limp in once again set up the trap here and han once again raises up to 500 dollars well, time to try to get some of my money back because I am going to 3-bet once again, sizing up to a large sizing of $6,000. And here he is, Han, making the call. So going heads up to a flop, which comes Jack-5-4. If only this was the flop that we saw the previous hand. Sadly, I have ace-king high, but I still decide to throw $6,000. We know that Han can have lots of different hands here, some strong and some weak ones. So hoping to get the weak ones out of the way in fold but he does end up making the call so alarm bells here ace king probably not the best hand but we're going to a turn which is the seven of hearts brings in a backdoor flush draw doesn't really help me out at all so i decided to check it to han and he checks this one back now to the river which is the nine of spades another card that i just don't know what to do with here with sitting with ace king high don't love my hand don't think my hand wants to bluff so I decided to check this one, and then he fires out $21,000. That is too much, sir. I think I'm going to let this one go. Don't want to get sticky and tilt off and hero call ace king high for no reason. And here Han takes down another one with his pocket queens. He has premium after premium, and I don't think I can beat this guy. We've got some work to do, fellas. You're losing two hands in a row, trying to bounce back here with ace queen of spades in the cutoff. There's an early position player who limps, and I raise it up to $1,000. Action folds back to Eric here, and he makes the call. So going heads up, and the flop is king, seven, deuce, two, clubs. Action here is going to go check, check. Now to a turn, which is the nine of hearts. Eric throws out a bet of $3,000. And I don't love this spot, to be honest with you. But hey, Eric is certainly known for bluffing, playing lots of hands, getting wild, and getting aggressive. So I decided to call this one peel with ace, queen, high. And now the river before the river comes. Fun fact, Eric actually throws out a blind bet. Blind bet $6,000. Then the river is the three of hearts. Wow, that could have been so cool if it was a queen or ace. If I could have paired up, I certainly would have had an easy decision to call here, but I don't know what Eric's doing here, to be honest, with the blind bet. It seems pretty strong, but I'm sure he could also be bluffing with this uh, little maneuver as well. But uh, yeah, I'm too sticky. I decided to call this one because... I've lost the last two hands. Why can't I win this one? Why can't ace queen high be the best hero call? Does not work out as you can see. He has a nine. And yeah, here, uh, getting played like a fiddle. The session is not going well. And I've lost three straight hands back to back to back. Shout out to Eric for his antics because that really got him paid an extra $6,000. What a move by him. Will we lose four hands in a row? Well, we're going to find out because I pick up king jack of hearts in the hijack. There's an early position raise to 1,200. Early position player makes the call. I decide to three bet this one to 4,500. And well, we get customers because both of them come along for a sweat. We're going to go on a ride here, and the flop is Queen 9 3 2 hearts. This is a ride I'm going to be staying on for sure. Flopping the combo straight and flush draw. Action checks to me, and I decide to throw out a bet of 4,500. The first opponent gets out of the way and folds, but Charles. 
he's going to stick around. And he's actually going to stick around for a higher price, bumping things up with a check raise to $16,000. Well... This is some sort of a development. Uh, do I think I want to put more money in here in position against Charles? Potentially, actually, because he can certainly get a little crazy. He can certainly do a lot of ridiculous things, and he certainly can get credit for bluffing. So uh, with all that in mind, I decided to just make my life easy and make the call. So here we are going to a turn with one of the bigger pots of the night ballooning up here. The turn is the Eight of Diamonds. Doesn't really help me out at all, but I guess Jack-10 would have gotten to be a straight, a hand that I could pretend like I could have. Anyways, Charles throws out a bet of $26,000 here. Very, very large amount. And it is a little bit annoying, though, because Charles doesn't have a whole lot of money behind. Anyways, I toss and turn whether I want to call, raise, fold. I think all of those options are uh, correct here. So I decided to toss in a call. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot behind, honestly, like I said, like about $35,000 in his stack after this, but Hey, I have such a strong draw and I'm in position. Maybe I can bluff on the river. Maybe I can just get there. I'm going to try to get there. Anyways, the river is the deuce of hearts. Thank you, dealer. I get there with the flush. Now I have a very easy decision, which is going to be calling it all in. But then Charles decides to check. Oh man. Seems like it's one of those points of the hand where my opponent is just checking and giving up with a bluff. And I guess he's wise to do that. But hey, I've got to try to get all the money, even though I don't think my opponent has much. I put him all in and he takes his time. If only I knew he had ace jack, because I honestly thought he was considering a call, but he does end up letting it go his ace high. And I'm going to win a big one. Finally, $136,000 pot coming my way, building up just one pot at a time, trying to chip away. Following hand is going to be a very fun one. Holding my favorite hand ever created in poker. It's pocket fours on the button. There's an early position raise to 400. I decide to make the call. Then Viffer to my left in the small blind. Three bets to $3,000. Massive amount here. Action folds to me, and I haven't seen Viffer get out of line this session so far. I'm in position against him, and I have a pretty fun hand to try to crack a strong hand like aces kings queens any of those premium holdings so i decided to gamble and call here for three thousand dollars so we're gonna go heads up against the legend himself viffer and we're gonna go to a flop which comes five eight six two spades and a heart here when he throws out a bet of three thousand dollars i am going to just go for it right here right now if i had a set if i had a really good hand i certainly wouldn't slow play this and i would continue fast playing so i'm gonna pretend like i have a set because if i have fours i can easily have five sixes and eights so i'm gonna raise it up to ten thousand dollars right here right now with my favorite hand don't let me down please anyways for an extra seven thousand dollars riffer comes along with a call so we are treading in some treacherous waters here going to a turn which is the ten of hearts two flush draws on the board my opponent checks over to me and i still think this is a better card for me than my opponent and i'm not going to give up here at all i'm going to fire twenty thousand dollars at this point little did i know what viffer actually had in his hand as you can all see right now i did not put him on this strong of a hand strong in quotation marks i thought he would have like aces and kings and stuff but you know pair and flush draw is really really good here as well but anyways he does make the call for twenty thousand dollars and we're gonna go to a river and which comes the nine of clubs Viffer checks one more time, and this board is getting scarier and scarier for one pair holdings. And this entire time, I was not repping a one pair holding, and I'm going to go for all of it, trying to bluff him off of just a one pair hand. Please, Viffer, just find the fold. I end up going announcing all in for about $53,000 total. And here, on to Viffer, hemming and hawing about his decision, but then a few seconds into his tank, he does make a gesture that seems like he's gonna fold to be fair he hasn't folded yet but it looks like he's leaning towards that direction and phew there we go get the bluff through and scoop a one hundred and twenty thousand dollar pot very much needed this one not only for morale you know gotta build up the confidence to win some pots and also good for my wallet as well after that fours hand about three hours go by of small pots card death nothing major but here we are picking up kings another premium what a great sight to see when you're playing big stakes you want to see some big hands here i'm on the button there's a limper then a raise to fifteen hundred dollars and what a dreams spot this is for me finally with some good cards to work with i three bet to six thousand dollars get the limper calling 
my my six thousand dollar raise uh that is very impressive to see then we get the original razor who ends up four betting to twenty five thousand let's freaking go i mean this is a, a beautiful spot to see against this opponent here he's he's been playing a lot of hands we're playing very deep against each other now that we both have pretty big stacks throughout the night and i'm just not going to slow down with the raising here look if my opponent wants to put in more money i am going to give him the option to put even more money in the middle because i five bet another re 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 raise to sixty thousand dollars here the original limper ends up getting out of the way finally okay after all of these multiple raises raises the limper is getting out of the way we finally got him to fold but now back onto the hijack player who i think i want to call from to be honest with you i mean i've been playing a lot of small pots for the last three hours let's play a really big one but then ends up folding but wants to see a flop which comes queen jack 10 well that would have been a very action flop as my opponent has eight four of clubs but anyways hey look i am not going to complain about an uncontested thirty three thousand dollars headed towards my direction i'm going to take this one down and happily fade the flop from one premium to another ace queen suited once again i'm in the big blind here we get a hijack raise to four hundred dollars kirk our buddy kirk from last hand he's in the button three bets to nine hundred dollars well, here I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, um, but let's see if our opponent wants to gamble for it. I make it 7000 bucks, and Kirk does want to gamble. He's someone I would call very affluent. Anyways, he makes the call for $7,000. We're going to see a flop, which comes ace-3-3. Three, three. Top pair seems like an easy and great spot for me. I throw out one chip, $5,000. And I see a snap call from Kirk here. Now off to a turn, which is the Jack of Spades. Not really a card I'm too concerned about. I'm just going to throw another small amount of 10,000 bucks here. It's small considering the size of the pot. And once again, my opponent snap calls. So, you know, he's giving a lot of action. I'm going to continue making the price super friendly. I definitely could have bet bigger, but when the river comes, the ace of diamonds, my goodness, now we have the board locked up. We have a full house. What more do you want me to do? Look, I'm going to throw out a $25,000 bet. I don't know how I ever get called, to be honest with you, but I'm going to make it small enough where maybe a pocket pair might get curious, but we're going to see what Kirk thinks. Good job. Missed everything. Missed Everything in the world. But I had a pretty good flop. Two Why clubs. are you still holding onto your card? Because I'm going to call you. I have a. <laughs> I knew he was trying to get a read. <laughs> Rampage just I calling it up. Why are you still yet. holding onto your cards? That was, the only that was great. Actually pay off. And just like that, he does flick in the call and I scoop a $94,000 pot in a pretty funny way as he had a pair and flush draw so, so pretty lucky for us to have him miss the flush draw and pretty unlucky for him to end up seeing one of the best river cards to hero call on to be honest with you but hey variants coming in the right side in our way and we're going to move on to the next spot with king queen of clubs on the big blind there's another limper two limpers three limpers then a button raised to 1400 Look at that. Large game, large sizing. I'm going to 3-bet to $7,000. I'm a lucky 7000 It worked so well last time. Let's try it again here. And the cutoff ends up making the call. I don't know how this happened, but we get the limper to call and the razor to fold. But now we're going to go heads up out of position to a flop of five deuce, deuce, two clubs and a spade. Here, I decided to throw out about a half pot sized bet here. I have a flush draw. I have two over cards. I'm going to throw $8,000 into the middle and Eric comes along for a call. Now going to a turn, which comes another five double paired board, a little bit scary for me, to be honest with you. Uh, not that I'm scared that he has a five or deuce, but just just overall not good for king high here at the end of the day anyways i check it to my point now and slow down then he fires out twenty one thousand dollars which is a pretty large size considering the size of the pot right now and here for twenty one thousand, he doesn't leave himself too much behind to play for either about fifty five fifty thousand dollars back so i do some inventory counting about what i want to do here and how i want to approach this spot and considering i'm out of position I feel like I can't really play this hand quite well if I were to call this large bet on the river and hope to hit. Doesn't seem like a winning strategy, so let's just gamble. Let's flip for it all. If my opponent has a hand like pocket sevens, I don't expect them to fold ever, but hey, what can I do? With, against pocket sevens, I still have plenty of outs and plenty of hope, so I'm all in for like the third or fourth time in this session. I'm all in for about $70,000, $80,000 total. And here onto Eric, 
You can't see the graphics on the screen, but he does tell me he had pocket threes in this hand. So he's hemming and hawing and looks like he's got a pretty difficult spot. Wants the hero call it off for all of it, but ends up reluctantly folding, which I'm very, very happy with. So yeah, just like that, gonna win a very large pot once again, bluffing, being all in, and very lucky that he had a hand just weak enough to fold. And here, happy to win this one. And we're going to move on to the very last hand of the night. Last significant one is certainly another fun one. Saving the best ones for last with Jack-10 suited. There's an ungun raise to $300. The game is playing super huge, so I just 3-bet to 2000 But now, Patrick Antonius, who's been playing a little snug today, he wakes up in 4-bets to $8,000. I mean, look, it's Patrick Antonius. How often are you going to get to... How often are you going to get a chance to play a big pot against a living legend and be in position of him at that? So with the playable hands, maybe could just fold this one, to be honest. But I'm not going to give up here. I'm here to gamble and see a flop. So I make the call for $8,000 total. Going to a flop, which comes a miraculous 10 10 8, baby. The sun is shining on us today. Patrick throws out a bet of $6,000, and to that, I happily oblige. Not gonna raise, not gonna do anything crazy to, you know, not scare my opponent here. I decide to call, and we're gonna see a turn, which comes a blank three of hearts. How beautiful is this? Patrick ends up firing once again for $15,000. And here, of course, I am going to once again come for a call because what else am I supposed to do? Raising seems once again super strong and I've got a dream spot with trips, hoping I'm up against an overpair like queens, kings, or aces. Now we're going to go to a river, which is the nine of spades. And Patrick takes his time and he ends up checking. Man, really want him to fire that third barrel either as a bluff or for value, but he Got to do my own betting here. And I look at his stack up and down and I count out about forty dollars to $50,000. The graphics are certainly wrong here. He definitely doesn't have $70,000 in his stack. And here thinking forty dollars to $50,000 is about a pot size bet. I feel like betting half pot or something smaller here would look somewhat fishy, to be honest. So for the fifth time, I think, of this stream, fourth time, I'm losing track how many times I'm all in. But I do exactly that. All in. And here we are putting Patrick into a pretty difficult spot. It seems like, can he fold his overpair? I would imagine at this point, that's all he's got because anything worse will probably just find an easy fold. Anything better would find an easy call. And I'm probably putting a hand like Queens into a really annoying spot. And here he ends up folding. So unfortunately not getting the call that I wanted but I will take this one down. So winning another pretty chunky pot, getting more chips pushed my way, and it's a lovely way to end the night. And at the end of the stream, the graphics are once again, just a tad bit wrong. I ended up winning about $141,000. So nice way to claw back after being down about 50,000 in the first couple minutes of the stream, first couple hours of the stream. And here, nice to find some run good near the end. I'm fucking back. <laughs> Feels good to book the first win of the year. Today is uh, February 3rd that you're watching this. Uh, I know you're watching this on like the 20th or something. Anyways, uh, nice to book the first win of the entire year after a month. <sighs> it feels good to get the monkey off my back. It feels good to slowly chip away at the $600,000 bankroll challenge basically I put myself on. And um, I made money today. Uh, game was a lot of fun. Probably one of the more fun games I've ever played, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the cast of characters and people on the table were great. I had lots of ups and downs. I think I went all in like four or five times. It's a lot of times to be all in. And uh, sometimes I had it and sometimes I did, it did not. <laughs> and luckily only one of them didn't work out. Uh, anyways, let's go over the numbers. Uh, I don't actually know how much I cashed out for, but I brought 200000 with me. And I ended up cashing out for 341000 which is a profit of 141,000. Graphics were a little bit wrong there. Uh, I lost a little bit of money like with random prop bets. <laughs> lost 10K from prop bets. Uh, so that was silly, but uh, happy to gamble, happy to give action and uh, slowly crawling out of the 600K downer that I'm on. So um, big thank you to everyone who tuned in and supported the stream. Thanks for watching the gambling because there was a lot of gambling and we played a lot of hands that we played for maybe like six and a half hours or something like that, which is a pretty long session. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. More content to come, whether it be poker or other things. 
Uh, I got I got some things coming in the works on this channel, so I'm excited for that. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.